Hi there, I'm Tom, and more importantly, this is the DF64V. I bought a couple of these around six months ago, and they've been in use on my espresso bench pretty much daily ever since. There is a link to a more comprehensive written review of this grinder underneath the video, but the executive summary is that, in my opinion, I think this is probably the best value premium end 64 mil flat grinder out there in the marketplace. And there's a whole bunch of new flat burr 64 mil grinders coming out in the market. There's the Zerno, there's the Time More, there's the Gebby, and there are actually others as well. But right now, in terms of availability, uh, you can put your money down and have this uh, on your espresso bench in a week or so. And it's got some pretty neat features. Now, first of all, the in the cup experience, I have to rate as five stars because there's such a large choice of high quality burrs that this grinder will accommodate. There's the SSP Espresso Burr, my favorite for light roast. There's the Gorilla Gear, my favorite for medium light espresso. Uh, there's the original DLC, which is diamond-like carbon coated uh, DF burrs, which is certainly my go-to burr for milk-based drinks. Uh, and there's a whole lot of others. The Little um, Gom Mizzen will fit this uh, and, and, and more. So there's this really wide range of very high quality burr sets, which will all fit into this grinder. And that's why I feel really compelled to give it five stars out of five stars for quality in the cup. The other things I like about it, uh, I do like the form factor. It's slim. It has a small footprint, which means you can fit more grinders on your bench. Uh, it's got the variable RPM, which I use. Uh, I have it on 600 RPM for filter coffees using Caspers at the moment. It's just cast and I have it on 1200 RPM for other coffees where I want a bit more body and a bit more richness and depth and, and flavor. But whatever you think about RPM, I guess the question I'd ask is, if you could have it, would you have it? And the answer for most people is sure, why not? Even if I don't ever use it right now, I might find a use for it later on. Other things I like about it uh, over the original DF grinder, well, there's a lot actually, because I didn't like that original DF grinder much at all. I kept misthreading the collars on both the DF64 and 83 grinders. There are aluminium on aluminium, as best I could tell. It's very easy to misthread. These are much heavier duty, more, more robust materials used in this grinder. The collar is very easy to thread on without misthreading it. Uh, the dial indicator is a little stiff, but relatively easy to ro rotate and quite smooth. Um, you do need bellows. You do need RDT, which is the little misting bottle where you spray the, the light mist. Um, the other thing I would change if I had a magic wand is this what I regard as quite a silly little dosing cup stand. Now note this does come in a timber color. I had this powder coated black because I dislike it so much I want it to blend into the background and not actually notice it. Um, other clever little thing that has magnetic shoot, ease of cleaning and so on. Uh, all around it's just a terrific package grinder. Should you buy it? Uh, probably. Uh, right now, it would be my number one recommendation. I get messages from people every week asking me, literally asking me which grinder should I buy. And after a few questions of diagnosis about budget and what the preferences are in the cup and so on, most of the time I'm recommending the DF64V. The other nice thing about the 64 mil flat format and having a grinder where you can change burrs in and out, um, you know, let's say once a week or once a month if you like, but you wouldn't want to do it every other day probably, uh, is that those burrs are relatively inexpensive compared to the alternate format of grinder, which is the 83 mil. So about another 40% per burr if you're wanting to get into the world of burr swapping, which I recommend you do. Um, so that's kind of the executive summary, what I like the most, what I don't like much about it. Uh, probably time to hop into the grinder lab and I'll show you the workflow. So here I am in the grinder lab, and normally when I'm here I have two grinders side by side and I'm doing a simultaneous grind and then a simultaneous pour using these identical ECM puristicas uh, which have been calibrated for temperature and pressure to make sure they're pretty close to each other. But today I'm just going to be using the one ECM puristica. I use an E61 group head because it's the most common and I'm using a fairly common bean, which in this case is a Colombian, which I've medium roasted. Uh, some would say it's it's um, dark, but I think maybe medium, medium dark, simply because it's a, it's a common sort of roast level to use. So I've got the DF64V set on uh, 1200 RPM. If you try to grind a super light roast, like a Nordic roast at 600 RPM, then this grinder will likely stall. If you grind a super light roast at filter 
uh, filter level, which is around 40, 45 here, that I've been using it with the Caspers. It'll grind absolutely fine, whatever, whatever bean you throw at it, pretty much, apart from green, perhaps. So for espresso, I'm using medium light mostly, sometimes a light, but never for espresso, a super Nordic light. That's what I use for filter. This is, as I said, uh, a medium beam. It actually rates 87 on the Tanino scale, which I think is also the Agtron scale. So technically, in terms of old school stuff, it is, it is a medium beam. So workflow wise, what we're gonna do is just hot start DF64V, take the cap off. Oh, you'll see here, by the way, pull out, this is the anti-popcorning device, which works very well and it has a very snug fit thanks to a little rubber gasket that runs around the outside. When you pop it back in, make sure that this little arm here that holds the anti-popcorning device onto the cap is on the upper side and that'll stop any beams just resting and sitting there when you do the grind. So grind on. Very quiet before you put the beans in. Like most grinders, the moist level does go up a fair bit. That's a reasonably brisk grind. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a puff. And probably gets another 0 0.3, 0 0.5 of a gram out. Turn it off, a little bit of a tap and you'll see that the grinds settle down quite nicely. I don't know if you can see that in, in the cup. While we're here, I may as well show you how I prepare the puck. I personally use a paper filter on the bottom because that improves the extraction a little bit, I think. I'm gonna use a funnel. My two favorites are the Decent or Sheldon from Swarksworks. Dump it in the basket. Uh, Swarks WDT tool, my favorite by long shot. I've tried a bunch of the Moonraker style, SG style, etc. style, but I do find that the Swarks puck rake is as good as it gets. I do small circles right to the bottom of the basket, so I'm actually touching the paper on the bottom, getting into all the edges, and then I come up slightly, and then I'm doing north, south, west, east technique just to balance out. Get the, get the grinds as even as I possibly can. Funnel comes off. My little um, Artisti leveling tool, which I think is great, available from Artisti here in Australia. And I scrape off the excess grinds. I deliberately overdose a little bit, so I've got this perfectly smooth, flat surface at the top before I reach for my Malvani Tampa, all 800 grams of it. And it's a nice soft leveling tamper, so the bed is nice and even, all prepared. And then I use a filter paper on top for no other reason than just to keep the shower screen a little, a little cleaner than it might otherwise be. All right, let's pour a shot and see what it looks like. Well, that's it from me. If you're seriously interested in investing in a DF64V, please make sure you click on the link below the video, have a read of the more in-depth written review so that you're fully informed. Now, you're, you're welcome to post comments here. Uh, just in the interest of full disclosure, please note I won't be responding, uh, probably won't even be reading them. But if you do have constructive feedback, uh, any suggestions, I always welcome that. You can email me, tom at tomsgrinderlab.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button because I've got a lot more in-depth review and comparison content coming your way.